Welcome to the Weird and the Weary. I'm Jason. With me is Kevin. Hey there. And Lee. How are you today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Doing all right. Good. Wonderfully. Nice. Nice. Uh, nobody has the coronavirus yet? Not yet. No, I don't think. It's called Lysol, people. Yeah, I just ingest it. Um, I just let strangers cough on me. Before we started, I asked uh, Kevin if he wanted a little shot of uh, streak-free shine for the window. Oh, that's, that's true. Right down the gullet. It'll purify, but... He was good. He had some water instead. Yeah, smarter move. It actually says it right on the back of the can. It uh, kills human coronavirus. Right, right. So I don't understand why they don't just say Lysol. Lysol stock should be going through the roof. It probably is. It probably is. That's, you know, you should get your shorts and then uh, just dump right in the Lysol. And, and, uh, and 3M. 3M. And and uh, whoever makes Purell hand, san, the hand sanitizer. Oh, I do. You can just send your money. money oh, back. okay. You make your own batch. Yeah. You your own small batch uh, sanitizer. <laughs> I just use cheap vodka and uh, just like whatever grass. It's good. Just the house. pour it all over. Yeah. Leaves. <laughs> Jeez, sounds like a drunk doctor. But, I mean, you know, with, with this, this, this virus looming, I mean, it's almost like a movie, right? Yeah. You know, like like outbreak. That was a monkey, right? Like a little capuchin monkey that got yes, everyone sick. Yes, and Dustin was. Hoffman's like, "Oh no, what are we gonna do?" And then they fly in a bunch of helicopters, and and then I think Doesn't they Cuba Gooden Jr. comes save the day. Yeah, he like pulls the monkey's spine out, and they pull the flu. No, oh, that's the Cronenberg version, right? That's uh, <laughs> it eats that's the, the Andromeda spine. strain, right? No, <laughs> that... no, Andromeda strains where they drink uh, uh, the Pink Lady. They drink Sterno. And that's what saves them from this space virus. Uh, if, if you're drunk, yeah, like the <laughs> <laughs> the shit would like just kill you instantly. But, but but if you were drunk, you had some alcohol in your blood. Yeah, you're fine. Uh-huh. So some like dude who lived in a shack somewhere was drinking Sterno because mm-hmm. you know it's ethanol with poison in it. And uh, if you drink too much, you go blind. Yeah, learned that from that movie. So. Oh. <laughs> Ain't no aliens getting me. But Hollywood's taught us a lot of things, right? Cool stuff like that. How to survive yeah. an alien plague. Sure. Now I know. Just drink drink alcohol. Just be drunk all the time. Yeah. You'd be prepared for anything, really. <laughs> right? I'm just getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there's always tomorrow. Do or do not. Right? Some Yoda shit, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hakuna Matata. Which means uh, when your dad gets murdered in cold blood by your uncle... You just go fuck off in the woods with your friends and uh, eat bugs while the empire crumbles away. Wow, that's like yeah. a Japanese word, right? You say one Japanese word and it's like a book. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, just, yeah, eat bugs. Who cares? Like, my uncle's pretty tough. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with him. I ain't gonna him. deal with that. <laughs> I ain't got daddy issues no more. Rawr. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. I mean, you know the pig was a stoner anyway. He's out there. I found some truffles. If he could do air quotes with his little pig hooves. Mm-hmm. Was that a meerkat that he was hanging out with, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Or muskrat. Because he smelled so bad, everyone else left him alone. What well, was it? Timon and Pumbaa, right? Yeah. They had, I think they had a little cartoon for a minute of their own, right? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Timon and Pumbaa. Catch it on Disney+. Plus. Right, give me Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Indiana Jones? Come on. Indiana Jones taught us. Quite famously that uh, you never bring a sword to a gunfight, right? Or, yeah. Or, Otherwise, he'll get shot. Right. And he had the shits. So. Yeah, he had the shits that day. Yeah, he was little, just like... A little yeah. trivia. <laughs> Not in the mood. You know, sometimes you just can't trust the movies, though, I'm telling you. Like, like Jeff Goldblum and putting a virus in the alien ship, you know, with a, with a Packard Bell 386 and Independence Day. You remember, <laughs> remember that crap? Uh, no, that's not happening. You're using a Windows OS versus a Alien OS. Right. Bullshit. <laughs> I, I, you know, I honestly think that the argument probably been like, math is a universal language. <laughs> Jeff just does what he wants, as far as I know. Um, life will um, find a way. <laughs> right? Right? That, that movie. Co- the code? Did you guys see that? Did you see that? <laughs> surprised it wasn't like a commodore 64 fucking all right let's do this syntax error i gotta stop because if i keep talking like gold bloom i'm just gonna keep doing it all day and then all night you and, do or yeah. as it is well you oh. can you said you're taking a break today you, you can listen to him talk some more on disney plus <laughs> all right give me disney plus because i want to <laughs> see some gold bloom so <laughs> watch he's gonna wind up being like richard hamilton it's gonna suck 
Now, in the in the case of uh, in the life of of Pedro or Peter Francisco, uh, you know this guy he 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 knew how to use he knew how to use some weapons. You know, he's pretty pretty tough. Yeah, he's a tough guy. Tough guy. Tough yeah. guy stuff. <laughs> he could probably shoot um, like ten men and then slice every bullet coming at him. I'm I'm just you know. That's what I think. Bullet to men first. He could actually probably hit the cannonball, unlike uh, uh, Gertz there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gertz. Uh, Iron Fist. I think Gertz did hit the cannonball, but yeah, you know, that's how we lost the arm. R.I.P. that hand. <laughs> now, Peter was born to a wealthy couple in 1760 in uh, Tessiera. It's a small island in the Azores near Portugal. And at age five, he was kidnapped with his sister though she managed to eventually escape from the captors. And uh, Peter, he, he wasn't so lucky. And he was brought to North America for reasons unknown. And some believe his kidnappers planned to hold him ransom and uh, or sell him into servitude in the New World you know, because everybody needs some, some help out there, right? I could really just use a five-year-old boy out here to help me out to the... Yeah, he could totally, like, chop a tree down or two, you know, build a barn. Yeah. Hey, boy, you ever use an axe before? <laughs> What's well, an axe? Good. Take it. <laughs> and that's how he learned. <laughs> uh, others say that it was to uh, it was all planned to bring Peter outside of the reach of his, his family's enemies. You know, they're not going to go all the way to New World to kill a five-year-old. It's a lot of travel. Yeah, man. fuck that. Fuck, man. That's a long boat ride. Croatoa. Get really angry by the time you get there. He's already <laughs> eight, and you're like, oh, the contract was for a five-year-old. Ugh. Uh. Fuck. I'll never get paid for this. Is this the origin of the Minutemen? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Could be. Yeah, but, uh, you know, regardless of these reasons, you know, Peter was found on the docks of the uh, City Point in Virginia and was soon taken in by Judge Anthony Winston, who uh, he helped raise him and tutor him. And soon after, uh, you know, he was old enough to work, Peter started apprenticing as a blacksmith. And because of... Uh, He's just downright massive. He was like an ox, you know, like six whiskey barrels across. Oh. Yeah. You know, just a big giant, giant man. You know, he was, he was six foot eight. All right. That's four inches in me over me, 280. Uh, so he's six foot eight. So he's four inches taller than me and he's 260 pounds. So he's just fucking lean, giant mm. war horse. Big boy. Big boy. Could probably just mash the iron with his fists, you know, make it warm with from the friction as he's <laughs> pulling on it. What, you use fire? <laughs> fire. Who uses that? Just look at it. <laughs> just making diamonds with these hands all day. He's making fences. He's just going, twerking the shit with his fingers. Chopping logs with his hand. Oh, yeah, these people need fire. I don't need it. Doing the Captain America just rip that thing apart. <laughs> He hey, pro- probably could. <laughs> hey, look a deer. He spit dead. <laughs> right through the heart. Got him. Now, because of his stature, he became the Virginian Hercules. And uh, also known as the Virginia Giant. Which, hey man, that's that's pretty pretty big. You yeah. Know? I mean, literally. Uh, especially for you know, the new world, it's still developing. And everybody knows about this guy already. It's like, yeah, man, there's this giant there's like 13 people in town and there's that guy <laughs> you see him yeah i th- i think <laughs> i think i don't know man was he the guy that's two feet taller than everyone else here i haven't been eating really well i see a lot of things <laughs> i don't know i see dead people <laughs> so eventually he he joins the uh, 10th virginia regiment at 16 years old and immediately begin kicking some british ass Tom rod couch Yep, yep. He started acquiring red coats and discarding uh, musket wounds. You know, he just probably plugged them with the red coat. He'd yeah, it's ri- not a big deal. <laughs> rip it off of them as they're trying to run away. You know, because he can't reload that quick. As he's just <laughs> get over here, barreling through. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. You know, just hits him in the shoulder. He's like, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll plug it up later. <laughs> Crush up some iron in there. A little lead shot. Give me that rock. Bloop. He even took part in Mad General Anthony Wayne's attack on Fort Stony Point on the Hudson in 1779 and was the second person to actually breach the fort. 
The first guy, he threw him over <laughs> and made him go in the fort first. Hey, so, go get that fucking yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey! Yeah, I don't I'm know okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> My leg's broken. Smells like almonds. <laughs> like almonds. <laughs> he received a nine-inch gash across his stomach for all of his efforts. You know, which, I mean, for that guy, it's really not that much. Yeah, it's, it's not a big like, deal. Yeah, it's like a scrape. You're you know? killing me. I must cut you. Oh. It's like when you fall off your bike when you're a kid. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm going to bleed out. <laughs> and uh, no, this guy's nine-inch gash. He's like pushing his organs in. Uh, this happened once when I was making a horseshoe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Viscerated myself. It's all right. Dude. Fucking horse. I was just making it right on his hoof. <laughs> It'll mend in half a fortnight or whatever they, I don't know what they would say. But <laughs> I don't think they played Fortnite back then. No, no, nobody did. It wasn't that popular. Yeah, Washington was an early adopter. So. <laughs> Little known fact, he kickstarted that shit. So. I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> but he returned the favor for that that wound by killing three British grenadiers and then stealing the enemy's, enemy's flag. So that goes back to the one the kids thing when they were doing the war to experiment the uh, robbers experiment. Oh remember? right, right. And he was like, oh, "We got your flag. <laughs> oh, we're gonna eat you." <laughs> I'm sure that's what he fucking said. To, I got your flag, and now I'm going to eat you. And I was like, oh, shit. He, I'm going to eat you alive. He could eat us, too. Yeah. I've seen him make, like, two hammers with his mouth. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, he's just a complete badass. Um, tossing people over the fort wall. You know? <laughs> yeah, somebody I'd want to fight. He's modest. He doesn't want to be first. You know, so he... Uh... <laughs> Please, after you. <laughs> <laughs> but even with all of his modesty... Uh, his efforts were so noteworthy that he was mentioned by name in the report to General Washington, and as well as the report to a uh, Virginia General Assembly. So he's even huger now. He did you it. Know, he's probably now he's probably like seven foot two. Yeah, he at gets this point. he gets bigger the more people talk about right. him. I think right seven two three hundred and twenty five pounds. He's as big as Goliath, but he caught the stone with his own hand. He threw it back and killed all the redcoats. He did it. That that was in the report. That, <laughs> that, that was Washington. That was going. That was right to General Washington. If he's American, why is everyone doing the British accent here? Well, because they're still they're still he, kind of British. He grew. That's it. true. Colonists. Right. Yeah. 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 I've been watching a lot of Townsend's on uh, YouTube where he makes all the traditional food from the 1700s. Yeah, it yeah. looks horrible. Not all of it. Some, Some of it looks good, but the ketchup looks kind of gross. It's made of mushrooms. I don't know. It's kind of weird. And it's all watery. What? and Yeah. But they used it as like a starter for stuff. I, to I talked about it before, how that invention of ketchup was to make rancid food taste better. That's all it is. And it still does. So the same thing. So that's why like rectum put... hot dog, you just drown it in fucking ketchup. It's all sugary now. Oh, yeah, drown that rectum. So that's how come kids always put ketchup on everything. And when yeah. you make some beautiful looking eggs and some son of a bitch just squirts ketchup all over it. No. God. The only time that's acceptable is when you're eating frittata. So it's never acceptable. Ketchup is not eggs. Okay, what about what about sriracha sauce? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I put hot sauce on the eggs. That's hot what's sauce. Up. Yeah, hot sauce mixed in the eggs. Make a tomato yeah. relish. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, getting off topic here, but I'm really adamant about like ketchup's just an evil, evil thing. You know, it's so sugary and gross. On this special culinary edition of the weird <laughs> and the weary, make yourself a tomato relish for your for your frittata. And if you egg, so. And if your eggs go bad, the ketchup won't make it better. Throw it out. In 1780, the uh, U.S. suffered a defeat at the Battle of Camden. And Peter, he was still doing his best. You know, he's trying to fight the fight. And he killed a British grenadier before they uh, killed his colonel. And then bayoneted through uh, cavalrymen. Like horse and all, probably. And just right through it. <laughs> Lift the horse up. Throw it behind him. Um, and then, uh, stole his horse and pretended to be British to breach the enemy lines. Apparently he was just yelling stuff out with like a British accent. <laughs> oh, <Oy! laughs> I, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, Can I don't anyone know. spare a cuppa? <laughs> <laughs> That's him. He's our guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, do they have like the dumbest guys on that line there? You know, like, oh, you know, he sounds like he's from home. Maybe. <laughs> I wish I was home eating bangers in marsh. Why is he laughing as he rode past us, though? I, 
Nobody else does that. Yeah, I don't know, man. One of this fucking giant guy. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that big bloke before. I don't know. I don't know. But Air, they were dumb. Airdropped him in, I guess. <laughs> Holy shit, look for the green stock. I also think if you see, a like, a stock. giant bloody man on a horse, like, you're just going to keep to yourself. Yeah, look <laughs> at that cat go. See you later. Yeah, you're British. You're French. You're British. You're Germany. Whatever you want to be, man. Like, <laughs> I don't care. It's Jesus. 18th century Conan. It's like fucking Blood Meridian, like the judge right now, <laughs> right now with the leather leather fucking straps all yeah, over him. Just let him go. I wouldn't worry yeah, about that just, guy. You know, I ain't coming out to eat with you. Go away. Go away. <laughs> and away he did. And he uh, he did breach the enemy lines. He got right through. And then he gave the horse to his colonel so he could flee. What a nice guy. He's such a gentleman. He is. Just, you know, gentle giant. Except, you know, when... You're Except when he's on murdering. the same side, you're right. Yeah. yeah, you know, like when you're on the other side, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna plow through you, <laughs> steal a horse. That horse's ass hurt because you know he smacked the back for it to run. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, its hip was broken. Broke a leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that every time. Damn it! <laughs> now Peter, he uh, he took off. You know, started walking away from the battlefield. And he found that his countrymen were leaving behind valuable supplies as they didn't want to struggle against the mud in their escape. So, uh, you know, a little idea sparked. And, uh, you know, he's a tough guy. He started uh, digging out these enormous cannons and started lugging them over his shoulder. <laughs> Jeez. I got that. Horses can't do it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. I mean, fucking horse. Piece of shit horse. <laughs> Where'd you guys get these horses from? They suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a carrot stallion. What the? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm going to punch him out. He keeps looking at me like that. Knock out your fucking ponies. Got a cannon. This guy is the judge from, from uh, <laughs> fucking Blood Meridian. Jesus, yeah, the more, the more I hear about him, yeah. Yeah, the howitzer at the end of the Blood Meridian, you know. <laughs> this guy's digging cannons out of the mud, throwing them over his shoulder, and... Uh, yeah, he carried him out and made sure the British couldn't steal them. You know, good guy, good guy. Yeah, man. So I mean, still doing his part, even though there's no fight. He's taking the fight away from the Redcoats. You know, just doing, yeah, doing his tough guy stuff. It's totally my cannon now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I wonder how much that thing fucking weighed. A couple hundred pounds, easily, man. Yeah. I mean, he probably just took the you know the firing mechanism and didn't take the, the ro- yeah because uh, they could just build another one of those, but yeah. easily a couple hundred pounds. Jeez. No problem. No problem. Right over his shoulder. Rot metal. It's like the beginning of Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's like holding that fucking, you know, uh, you, uh, sequoia tree or something on his shoulder. Just... Yeah, who does that? Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold. He didn't even have any cushion to padding. That's not real. Peter Francisco. He could definitely probably do that. He can just shoulder butt the tree out the, out the ground. <laughs> Francisco. That's fun to say. So, <laughs> rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> he wandered around for a little while and, uh, you know, just kind of did his own thing. And then eventually he joined up uh, to fight with the, the Cornwalls at the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Shot the cannon off his shoulder. He did. He had two at this point. <laughs> Light <laughs> it! <laughs> I can see him. Double barrel. That sounds awesome. We should make this movie. <laughs> Double barrel cannon holder. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you want to put those down? No. <laughs> Fire. Yeah, he just lights them by rubbing his head on each side. <laughs> but I want to see him <laughs> shoot back. <laughs> just like snaps his fingers on the fuses. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, fellas. <laughs> what are you calling? Who are you? I dream a genie? What the hell? <laughs> Snapping his fingers. And- Francisco. <laughs> I do this so the British can't steal it. <laughs> Actually, he wouldn't have a Spanish accent anymore. Or a Portuguese accent anymore. He'd have a... Uh... <laughs> it changes every time he shows up to another battle. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could easily make this movie then. Yeah, the budget would be, like, non-existent. No problem. It'd be like Sam Worthington movie. Yeah, like... Uh, Starts off American, ends up Australian. <laughs> yeah, every time. Every time. Now, he didn't have time to wait around reloading for uh, his muskets. You know, he, he didn't, he, he wasn't that kind of guy. You know, I mean, that takes a while. You get one shot, you got to get back. You yeah, you got to pour in the powder or whatever. You your, 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 your lead you in. Little fucking your primer, jammy stick. Jammy stick. Yeah, that's a whole I thing. I don't know. I watched that movie <laughs> Glory. They talked about it and like it took them 
that whole scene to learn how to do it. Right. That seems like a long time. That's like two minutes. Sure. I'm not going to learn in two minutes. Oh, man. Fuck that. Oh, you're talking about when they're stuffing the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the one guy just could do... I shoot squirrels at home. You know, like, okay, cool. Because there's nothing else to eat. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. good news. God, that was such a sad movie. So, you know, he ditched the musket and he strode right through the enemy lines with his broadsword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and this isn't Conan. You know, this is the 1700s. So he just... He just came in slicing, dicing, and uh, by the end of the battle, he killed about 11 British soldiers. Uh, 11 British soldiers. Take that, shoulders. All by himself. Took heads uh, and shoulders, didn't he? (laughs) Get on those knees and toes. (laughs) This earned him a a monument in the National Park that still stands to this day. So, bravo to him. It weighs about 7,000 pounds. (laughs) Just standing there. Waiting. It's all iron, cast iron. He made it himself, actually. He uh, stood in the center of the park and then just <laughs> died and turned into iron. You know, this like, has been a good life. Carved out his own little shit underneath. He's yeah. Like, like, Did anyone else see how cool that was? Like some anime ending, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is how tough I am. I turn into iron. Yeah. I yeah. was just thinking of Clash of the Titans from 81 when Medusa <laughs> freezes oh, him. Like, yeah. <laughs> good stuff right there, man. Ralph McQuarrie, right? No, who did, or no, who did the effects in that? Ray Harryhausen. 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 Uh, Peter was wounded in this battle, however, uh, by a bayonet in his thigh. So he was sent home to Buckingham to recover. Uh, and this would also be when his most famous actions would take place. Yeah, because that wasn't cool enough. No, that was definitely not cool enough. You know, just, it's just a saving warm-up. a colonel, taking a fort. Killing 11 people with a sword while they have muskets. No. He's a marathon killer. He's pacing. <laughs> you guys are stupid. Y'all shot right off the bat. <laughs> now, Peter, one night he's leaving a tavern, you know, getting his drink on, letting his his his, his thigh heal up, you know, a little, a little poke in the thigh. Yeah, it's a deep wound. Just, it, yeah. <laughs> it only went seven inches. It you know, didn't hit anything. I have another six inches before the bone, so... <laughs> All that muscle on me. I'll just leave it. He's not supposed to take it out anyway. So he's feeling good. He, he leaves. He finds himself surrounded by uh, a band of nine mounted dragoons. And uh, Wait a minute. They had dragons on dragons? Yeah, man. Or if you play Final <laughs> Fantasy, they all jumped in the air and disappeared. Yeah, they're all really good jumpers. <laughs> and you're going to have to worry about them in like three turns. And Peter knew in three rounds they are going to come back. <laughs> so he guarded for three rounds. <laughs> Nope, it was uh, yeah, mounted on horse. Uh, nine dragoons, they're led by the Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton. Wait, what's this Game of Thrones bullshit? Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a hard hardcore name. Man. Yeah, I like, like it. You know you're a badass when your name's Bannister Tarleton. Why are you named after a fucking piece of, of a house? That's stupid. Well, you know what? Oh, misspelling. He'll, ru- he'll run you through, <laughs> man. He'll run you through. But he got arrested for his previous actions. As he was uh, pretty well known at this point and really hard to fucking miss. You know, uh, like, oh yeah, you're the bloody guy that ran through the lines. <laughs> you still haven't taken a bath in like six months. <laughs> I could see someone really short being in the sun and he's walking behind. He's like, oh god, the sun's gone. Oh shit. <laughs> you, you would think that just inclement weather would have gotten the blood off of your face. Did you just kill someone else on the way? I don't know. Oh my god, ain't you a fucking unit? I don't know, I stepped on someone. <laughs> I plead the fifth. What does that even mean? Because <laughs> you have no government. <laughs> <laughs> Paradox. <laughs> snake, snake. <laughs> so, in the uh, great history of, of civil forfeiture, these men, they, they told Peter to give up his silver shoe buckles. And as they looked to be worth, you know, a little bit of coin, right? I mean, oh, silver, yeah. probably nice, nicely shined up. Oh, yeah. He's out about town. Right? He's out here shining. Yeah. That's with the little black little thing in the middle. It's like the buckle. It's just... That's what I'm picturing. Like, That's, a, yeah. like pilgrims. pilgrims. Yeah. Yeah. He's like glitter pilgrim. <laughs> uh, just a glitter pilgrim. Some shit's a shiny. I like him. Go. That, 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 that pointed hat. Quaker oat hat. <laughs> That's why he's so tough. He's eating all those oats. He ain't rolling on me. He's got the same Quaker Oatman hair at this point. He's a little bit older. 
<laughs> he's leaving the tavern. He's got that creepy smile. <laughs> he's fucking loaded on oat, oat brow. <laughs> Looks like the Dutch boy when he's an old man. <laughs> and then some lieutenant and his men jump him for his his fucking shiny boot buckles. You know what they do? They just keep his fucking shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, they're being gentlemen. Take them buckles off. We'll leave the shoes. Of course, Peter, being the gentleman that he is, flat out refused. <laughs> and he told them to come take them for themselves if they really wanted them. So one man dismounted from his horse and knelt down to retrieve the buckles. When Peter reached down and grabbed the soldier's sword, quickly killing him. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. When a six foot eight man tells you to come get something from him, it better be like he's, you know, like you just bought something from him. You better be like, listen, close your eyes first. <laughs> if he tells you to come and take it, you don't, you don't do that. You Peter, are you coming on to me? Yeah, like, are we? We're friends, right? <laughs> we got. Let's talk. I'm not taking the silver buckles though. No way. He then used this sword, though. He went on to fight the remaining eight soldiers. <laughs> They'd all dismounted and tried fighting him as well. And uh, he was upon them uh, before they could even get their guns ready. He managed to drive them off on foot, stealing eight of nine horses. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I could imagine him just, like, holding all the reins in one hand, <laughs> slashing <laughs> off with the, the other hand. Get. Get. Just go. <laughs> run. Run. <laughs> piece of shit it's my horse now my horse leave one of the guns too i'm gonna sell it <laughs> it's just can you load it up i want to shoot it off as a victory thing <laughs> oh wait it's not a good idea those horses get spooked i'll be able to sell them <laughs> we've got a lot of kernels to save now mm. so <laughs> <laughs> now shortly yeah. after this endeavor he was ordered by his commanding officer to join the u.s army at yorktown in 1781 and uh he witnessed the british surrender Hooray. He's like, oh, well, it's going to be boring here now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just showed up to like intimidate him one last time. Standing on a hill with his <laughs> arms crossed. You know, just, All right, we get it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we know the Virginia giant. Yep. Yeah, he killed nine. He killed a couple of dragoons, took their horses right. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Got and, it. And you can hear the, uh, the, the song behind them. It's like, ooh. <laughs> Ooh, the dead oh, souls rise so up. <laughs> that was that was in the movie. Yeah, um, and he's holding the two can. He's burying the two cannons. <laughs> won't need these anymore. But when he puts them in the ground, he does it the barrel down, so they look like two big boobs with little nipples. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how we know Lee Noble directed this film. <laughs> Ooh. Turns into a fucking Blake <laughs> Edwards movie all the time. No, because as it pans up, you look at you like, wait, well, it's like boobs. <laughs> the song, the song he... changes boobs. <laughs> Is he jerking off? Turn this shit off. Turn this fucking trash movie off. It was a classic until the last 10 seconds. <laughs> See, my ending would have been him, like, <laughs> kicking the hole because he's so strong. He just kicks a couple times, throws it six feet under, <laughs> buries it with one sweep. Because he's huge. He's a big man. Now, after the surrender, there was no more war. So, Peter, he decided to uh, go back, pursue some education. And get that grade school education. <laughs> He's doing it. Get it, Peter. His childhood was stolen from him. I'm going to figure out that one plus one, damn it. I know all of war. And now I'll know some of maths. <laughs> oh, that, no. Here, here's the very last scene. He'll sit there looking at one plus one. He stares back. He looks he thinks back. He thinks of two cans on his shoulder. He's like, I had two. One plus one, two. <laughs> It's just a little ding. That's it. The end. Oh. Shit's turning into Billy Madison. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm, 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 all right. <laughs> now, and during this era, when you went to go back to get your grade school education, it was like Billy Madison. You actually sat with other kids. <laughs> 
<laughs> he sat in the one room with the other kids. And uh, that's what he did. He sat with the kids. He's a... <laughs> They mistake they had mistaken for to teach. Or like that Robin Williams movie where he, where he's supposed to be a kid, but he's Robin Williams. Jack. Like, Jack. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like Jack, <laughs> except it's the guy who played the the fucking mountain in Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh my god. How you doing? How you doing? He pets the he like touches the kid's head, but he blacks out the whole kid's <laughs> face and ba- everything. Looks like his hand swallowed the kid's head. And that's how the Jungle Gym was created. <laughs> it was actually called the Jungle Peter, but later on they decided that was a little bit too, <laughs> a little too racy. Well, he had a good time at school, and he uh, he regularly entertained the children with his stories of war. So I cut eleven men in half. Well, ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I learned. I learned ten and a half. I know. I, I know what a half is. Peter learned <laughs> fractions today. And then I just realized how many men I killed. I just did the math. <laughs> My God, this has so many endings like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he, uh, he eventually, he, he got his grade school education. He eventually he worked up to be a sergeant at arms um, to the Virginia State Senate and lived a full life of uh, 70 years. Woo! Yeah. That must have been one hell of a procession. Eight, nine guys carrying him. A bunch of people actually uh, took the day off to go, <laughs> to go see him that day, apparently. I bet. You know, I mean, he's... He's too heavy. Just light on fire. Biggest man in town. Phone a friend. We need help. <laughs> now, you might think that these short, sword shenanigans uh, only worked because Peter was up against old-timey muskets and rifles, right? But you'd be wrong. Dead wrong. Dead. I don't... I don't want to be wrong. You don't want to be wrong? You don't want to be dead? No. Okay. Well, I don't have my sword. Okay. I don't have my mall ninja sword. So. <laughs> now, case in point, though, uh, one John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill. <clears throat> um, yeah, they called him that, too. Like, they would, hey, John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill. Yeah, every time he's in every trouble time. as a kid. It's not Mapplethorpe. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I don't think this guy would have been an uh, actual, like, uh, a, a great model for Mapplethorpe. Uh, Mapplethorpe, sorry. Um <laughs> this guy, you know, yeah, yeah too few teeth. Um, he's also went by the name of Fighting Jack Churchill or Mad Jack. So definitely not Maplethorpe quality. Uh, probably not smooth or muscular, really. You know, I think he's probably a little, you know, a little like sausagey. That's how I picture him. I just, I played too much Assassin's Creed. They always made those guys look like they drank like bleach or something <laughs> what's so they have like iron chic body oh wow holy shit yeah like yeah like <laughs> like, like he's good <laughs> right right How, yeah like what my stepdad turned into yeah he uh, wasn't even iranian anyway. no not even <laughs> not even a little <laughs> now uh john malcolm thorpe fleming churchill or we'll just call him john he was born a british citizen in 1906 uh though he was technically delivered in what is now Sri Lanka. But at that time, right, it was uh, occupied by, by the Brits. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why, yeah, he's British, yeah. Most of the world was. Pretty much. Uh, even America still. Yeah. His family regularly moved around to follow his father's work until they settled on the Isle of Man, where John attended King William's College. Jeez. He joined the Manchester Regiment in 1926, serving in the Army for 10 years in Burma. Wait a minute, wasn't... What you call it there? Um, Lawrence of Arabia. That time. No, 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 no. Nineteen eighty-four. Nineteen what? Nineteen eighty-four. There, at author. Why? Why am I like losing that right Orwell? now? Orwell. Yeah, he was. In the, he was a Burmese policeman around that time. I think. Wasn't that the man who would be king? Wasn't that set in that same area too? I think so. Yeah. Wow. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. You learn a little shit today, Kevin. Yeah, I'm learning so much. <laughs> he uh, he left the army to pursue a career as a newspaper editor in Kenya, while working as a male model on the side. So I was totally wrong. See, totally wrong. My assumptions about this guy, totally wrong. Probably pr- probably could have filmed or uh, shot with Maple Thor. Ah. Mm, he model. became a, a bit of a jack of all trades and used his unusual skill in archery and bagpipes to land parts in a couple films over the years. You know, I mean. I guess 
those are two unique skills. Yeah, to say the least. Definitely. I mean, bagpipe to me is just horrible, but that's for another show. Uh, <laughs> but what they don't mention is that when during the competition, he would play the bagpipes while other people were shooting. He's like, "Oh, sorry, I just practicing." <laughs> right, he'd fire arrows out of his bagpipe. That's the oh, nice. I like One it. of his most notable parts, though, uh, was uh, in the Thief of Baghdad, which I think Kevin watched just a few days ago. It's one of oh, my favorite de- films. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh love- wait, that's Aladdin. Sorry, sorry, wrong movie. Yeah, yeah. that's and you know what? Same thing though. He's a thief. He stole like apples and shit at the beginning. Yeah, right? he's one step ahead of the law, man. And her heart. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think Oh no was in that one. N- in the Sega Genesis version, it was. Yoko Ono was in there? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I didn't have a Sega. So, so when World War II broke out, uh, he returned to his position in the Manchester Regiment and was uh, quickly sent to France in the British Expeditionary Force. And John's act, uh, John's antics quickly no- uh, gained notoriety um, after leading his men to ambush a German patrol. And signaling them by charging in with his claymore held high. As one does in World War II. Right, exactly. I Now it's a John Cusack movie. Great. He liked fighting the Germans. You know, that was his thing. He liked to, he liked <laughs> to fight the Germans. Him. And he was a Highlander, man. He was, he was a real real Highlander. He liked just, you know, he thought he was anyway. But <laughs> he was immortal. So he, he volunteered to be part of a special new group, the Commandos. That's right. He's like, I'm already going commando. Let's do it. <laughs> Got this kilt on. <laughs> Breezy. And, oh. yeah, he's a, now he formed the commandos. He so did it. He wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nope. Not that movie. That was uh, Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos, oh, shit. right? Wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, he became second in command by 1941, and he took part in a raid on a German garrison in Norway on December 27th. And being a crazy fucker, John made sure that he was first to jump off the ramps when lowered onto the ship, or lowered from the ship. And, uh, you know, he doesn't have the couth that Peter Francisco had, you know, by going second when the fort was being taken. Right. This guy wanted to be like... Me like, first. Yeah, me Dips. first. Get out of the way. I'll stab you. Move it. I got to claim more. Claim more. <laughs> Move away. Claim more. <laughs> he jumps from the ship, mm-hmm. bagpipes out, playing the March of the Cameron Men. And uh, this motivated the guys. He was basically a bard, you know, a Dungeon <laughs> Dragons bard. Oh, perfect. Yeah. He so. was a hyphenate. He was a bard soldier. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dual, dual class. Dual class. Yes. yes. Wow, that's, I had to remember that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, so he motivated the men. Then he stowed his bagpipes, not going to tell you where, threw a grenade, <laughs> and charged in head first. Uh, receiving a military cross and bar for his actions. I just imagine it was like that character from He-Man, the short guy who was like Hammerhead. Oh, yeah, Ram Not Man. Ha- Ram Man. <laughs> yeah, where he'd like, it had a spring in his body, so he'd push his <laughs> legs in, and he'd... Ping. Yeah, he had like a little switch. And he'd... Ram Man. <laughs> and his, yeah, that was his ability to ram things. Awesome. And knock him out and, and break walls and shit. They didn't like the goat horns at first, so they went to yeah, the ram horns. Oh. Same one <laughs> he looks like a squished juggernaut. Perfect. <laughs> Mini me not. Now, by 1943, John was a commanding officer, and his Scottish outfit had become something of a trademark. He uh, he now regularly embarked on missions with a Scottish broadsword hanging from his waist, a longbow, and arrows hanging from his neck, and his trusty bagpipes under his arm. So this guy was cosplaying before it was even cool. <laughs> You know, he's doing it during the war, too, which is even cooler. Yeah. Really. Everybody's got, like, guns, cannons, tanks, and he's like, yeah, I got a, th- I got a sword and a bow. Everyone's afraid they're going to die. He's just like, yeah, let me out first. I got a song to play. I, I got a gig. <laughs> Wait, I'm feeling a certain vibe. I'm going to need to play this out. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what bagpipe sounds to me. <laughs> That's Jeopardy to me. What was that? I don't know. That's bagpipes to me. Right. You got to wash that mic now because I don't know how you did that with your ass. That was weird. <laughs> Damn, dude. Thank you. Years wow. of practice. Very impressive. So, you know, this guy, he's probably looked up on like a crazy son of a bitch. Like, wow, you know what? Yeah, follow him because he'll get hit first. <laughs> 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 We're going to shoot that fucking bagpipe. You just run. 
I'm just picturing like Family Guy when Peter's dressed up like a clown. He's like, "You, you guys are dumb. They're gonna be looking for soldiers." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So yeah, he had this uh, Highlander getup, and with the help of two commandos and a, and a corporal, John infiltrated the town of Molina to capture a German observation, successfully taking 42 prisoners and a mortar squad in the process. Nice. All with a sword and a bagpipe. They're like, stop playing. <laughs> stop playing. All right, whatever. We're done. We're done. We're getting out of here. We get it. Like Half the mortar squad blew themselves up, <laughs> and he didn't stop playing. He uh, he forced them to carry carts of wounded townspeople with him back to the down the pass as he snuck up and uh, was rewarded with a distinguished service order. Hooray. This guy is decorated. Still playing the bagpipe. He's got his own decorations, though. Yeah, yeah, he made his own. You, know. you gotta keep it decorated. <laughs> nice. And then you do it with the uh, bagpipes. Yeah. Only, oh, he, oh, shit. Only you, I gotta only, wipe it now. Only he uses that mic. <laughs> shit. Literally. Damn it. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be rough. So after they, uh, you know, after John made sure they arrived safely, um, yeah, he went back to town because he lost his sword. He lost, went back to the, the battle area to get a sword back. I mean, you need that fucking thing. Whoops, dropped it. If somebody else finds that, they're going to pull it out of the ground, do 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 you know, and then they're going to get all the power. Right? To the next king or yeah, something, yeah. Something like that. I was thinking more He-Man of Thundercats. Oh, it would have to be a dagger for Thundercats. My bad. No, it was a sword. It was a sword of omens. It yeah, started as a dagger. That's what I'm saying. It right, to... it's penis metaphor. That's all it is. Going from meek to wild. And He-Man, Ooh. getting into that, He-Man never used his sword. He never fought with his sword. He punched. Look it up. It's funny. Yeah, he blocked shit with his sword. He, yeah, he blocked lasers with his sword, but he That's never, it. like, yeah, he never swung it and hit anybody with his sword. So. It was a Christian cartoon. It's just for the look, guys. Some homoerotic Christian shit. Man. Actually, it's Quaker. It's Quaker fantasy fiction. Back to the Quakers. <laughs> Peter and Francisco the Quaker. <laughs> The Earthquaker. So on his way back, uh, he ran into an American patrol that was going the wrong way. They were walking towards enemy lines. And he told them this. You know, if he had a sword, they probably would have fucking listened. But Definitely, they see some but fucking loom with bagpipes and a bow. Yeah, just bagpipes and a bow. That's Might not have good had, like, enough. one arrow. They're probably like, oh, what's he doing? Hunting deer? Scaring birds? <laughs> get out of here, you weird homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not part of us. Get, get out of here. He looks kind of thick in our head. Yeah, completely ignored by the NCO. So he strode off and uh, yelling to them that uh, he wouldn't be coming back a bloody third time to save them. And I heard that in Michael Caine's voice. Yeah, totally. In 1944, he led a group of 1,500 random fighters. He described them as a motley army to try to take back a German-held island uh, of Brock in Yugoslavia. They were routed by gun emplacement, so John withdrew for the day before suffering major casual, uh, major casualties, and he worked on another plan. And at first, he thought he could just tunnel his way under the claymore, just keep digging with it, you know. They're never going to see it coming. Yeah, what if I just throw it over the wall? Right. I'll kill at least 17, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's bigger than I am. God. Uh, nope. He had another plan, though. The The following day, he led 43 commandos in a flanking attack. And though only seven of them would successfully had, uh, reach the ob- objective. And, you know, it's quite a big loss. Yeah, quite, yeah pretty big. Quite not, a, not a great time. But they made it further than the <coughs> 1500 army before. Right, right. So these commandos were tough. Yeah. You know, and I, maybe some of them were just recently indoctrinated commandos. It's like, oh, you saw some shit. You're a commando now. Sure, yeah. <coughs> yeah you're totally a commando. Honorary <laughs> commando. Come on, let's go. Did you see me kill that guy? You're a commando now. <laughs> <laughs> the other guys that live, they're, they're like regular commandos. you know. <laughs> no, no. Artillery. Now they're commandos. Now they're commandos. And uh, ever the crazy man, John played Will Ye No, Co- Will Ye no Come Back Again, which is a hot... Hot one, hot one on bagpipes. Fucking banger. Will ye no come back again? <laughs> and uh, he played this as the Germans advanced on him, only stopping when he was knocked knocked out by grenades. Knocked out by grenades. <laughs> I was just going to say, not blown up, but knocked out. Knocked out. No, they just knocked him out. Yeah. It's no problem. Oh, tis a scratch. 
Now, the Germans, they, they figured that Crazy Jack Churchill must be related to Winston Churchill to account for all of his wild overconfidence. You know, like, what, what, yeah, you know, great strategician, you know, like, this guy plays great bagpipe, it, you know, like... He, he snuck in the middle of the night just to play fucking bagpipes in the middle of our fucking encampments. <laughs> yeah, it just ruined my whole meal. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Who is this guy? Jack's like, what a fucking numbskull. <laughs> So they uh, they flew him to Berlin for interrogation, and uh, Jack then recruited a Royal Air Force officer to join him. And together they crawled under barbed wire, through drains, and uh, they fled out into the Baltic coast. It did it, the Great Escape. <laughs> mm. You know he was probably just biting the wire in half as they're going through. Get out, get out of here, go sword on, mouth. Go on, get. No, he's whistling at it. Play more teeth. Watch this special technique. Oh, black magic. But their their escape was short-lived as they were uh, recaptured in the city of Rokstock. Damn it. And transferred to Tyrol during the final weeks of the war. Now, this is a pretty big deal. These were uh, two of among uh, 141 individuals handpicked by Hitler himself as the most troublesome and valuable prisoners currently held. And they were to be specially guarded by SS troops and the Death Head Unit as the uh, bargaining chips in the event that Germany might need to surrender. Which, uh, that's pretty crazy to be part of such a small group of people. Yeah, you know, very like, elite. I want the bagpipe man dead! <laughs> I hate bagpipes! That's probably exactly why. Probably exactly what yeah. it was. Now, communications broke down as the prisoners were being transported, and several of them fled to a nearby town in the confusion, informing a German army unit that they feared they would all soon be murdered. <laughs> Which, I mean, this guy's a rep. You know, he could probably just take a stick and probably kill you the same way as a claymore, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I just pulled the sheep's bladder out, and now I'm making my own bagpipe. <laughs> I just need your guts <laughs> and your spine. <laughs> I don't know the parts of a bagpipe, so I can't really tell you. That's close enough. Yeah, I know. Like it originally is made of, like a bladder or a stomach or something. Yeah, like so you ripped out his stomach. I'll need that too. <laughs> Blew into like a balloon. <laughs> it's got cleared out real quick. <laughs> now the uh, the German <laughs> army they they moved in and they. Uh, you know, vastly outnumbering the SS troopers and, and order them to leave the prisoners behind as the war was now over. And uh, the prisoners were all released, and Churchill walked for 100 miles to Verona, Italy, before meeting up with other military members. Damn, he didn't couldn't hitch a ride? No, his legs were fucking huge by the end. <laughs> you know, just giant. You want, you want a ride? <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, he got shipped back to Burma to aid with the uh, Pacific War, but the nukes were dropped before he arrived, and the fighting had already ended. Boring. That's what he said. Yeah. And uh, he was mad. You know, he loved fighting, by, and by this point, he's quoted as saying, if it weren't for these damn Yanks, we could have kept the war going another ten years. Well, yeah, that's that's the spirit, he's right? fighting Jack. He's ready to fight. God, don't want to meet up with him at like the grocery store after the war, you know. Like, any yeah. anything, you know. I could totally see Jason Statham playing this character in a movie directed <laughs> by Guy Ritchie. Oh God, <laughs> so much slow mo. <laughs> I'm into it. Let's make it happen. Yeah, but, I, I still want to do the other one about Peter Francisco with the two cannons on his shoulders. You know, just, oh yeah. Let's make, it, let's make it a double feature like Grindhouse or something. Yes, we'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, at the end of World War II, Jack was stationed in Palestine as an executive officer, most notably helping fight Arab forces that were attacking a medical convoy. He then coordinated the evacuation of 700 Jewish doctors and patients from the nearby hospital, guiding them to safety in Jerusalem, where they named Churchill Boulevard in his honor. Woo! That, you know, it's not a statue, but more people see it. Yeah. Definitely. I'm gonna walk real hard on Churchill Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> he spent the rest of his army years in Australia, 
where he became an accomplished surfer and made his own surfboards with guns on them. (laughs) (laughs) Surf Nazis must die. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking Argyle fucking surfboards. (laughs) Tartan. And then he retired to his home in England, dying at the age of 89. He surfed all the way from Australia (laughs) to England. I believe it. And into the great beyond. So that's, that's, you know. Some hardcore fools, bro. That's some big, big balls. Yeah. Fucking lead and molten steel. At least, like, Peter, you know, seemed... He was more of a strategician. You know, he walked into the bullets. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, This guy just, like, scared them all with his bagpipes. (laughs) They all went around them and went back around to the enemy. I mean, it's one thing if you could soak in a few bullets, but uh, to incite you know uh uh fear into your opponents with your shitty music <laughs> while while at the same time <laughs> making your other comrades like all excited that you're gonna stop soon when they kill everyone uh that's great that's yeah. good motivation yeah maybe maybe he just the music was so shitty the bullets just went around so they're like i'm not even getting close to that yeah i, I i'm gonna kill myself bullet said <laughs> playing missed <laughs> So the music, all right, so the music stops the bullets. They fall to the ground. He hands the bullets to his teammates, says, put them in your ears, boys, and it makes their heads explode. And when they hear it, <laughs> scanner's time. <laughs> Bam! There we go. We just wrote the movie. Wow. And yeah, we just gave away the ending. Oh, damn. Dude, we just wrote like five fucking movies with 20 <laughs> different endings. <laughs> That's pretty wild, though, man. You know, like, uh, talking about, like, Wojtek the Bear, like, those two would have teamed up. That would have been a team up. Oh, definitely. Wojtek and, and uh, um, John, uh, long name. Churchill. John Churchill. Thorpe is the only other one I can remember this moment right now. Mm-hmm. John Thorpe Churchill. Uh, <laughs> that would have been a good team up. You know, uh, That's wild. That's just crazy to think that uh, in World War Two, even, you know, like he's just charging in with a fucking Claymore killing people that is good stuff in a kilt <laughs> in a highlander outfit amazing amazing we got a new commando uniform nah nah i'm I, you know i know i'm 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 defying orders here but i need my i need my mobility <laughs> look at this range of motion right here <laughs> no i don't nope not look anymore nope <laughs> no more catch us online www.weirdandweary.com if you have any uh, questions, comments, info at weirdandweary.com. Jason and Kevin Lee at weirdandweary.com. You know, we're always checking our emails. Just, I'm checking we, it like 30 times a day. Every day. All guys, day. Guys, it's called notifications push. I don't like that. I don't like when my pocket vibrates. I don't trust them. Yeah. Social media, Instagram, Twitter, all those places. that Not very updated, but someday. One of these days. We'll get there. I, we're just deleting all of them. We're going to make our own new social media network. Oh, Jesus. Don't listen to him. I'm going back to MySpace. <laughs> yeah, we're going to MySpace. That's where we're going. MySpace next. No, it's called the Anti-Social Network. Oh, God. Don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jason. I'm Kevin. Apparently, I'm banned. I'm Lee. <laughs> be good to yourselves. Be good to everyone. Catch you next time. You can find me on the Craig... JK Media. Jekyll. This list missed encounters. Yep, yep. Uh, and me selling my my uh, Mall Ninja katana because I'm gonna buy a Mall Ninja Claymore. Oh, smart. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna Up get that the anime game. one uh, from Final Fantasy, the big one. Oh, cool. What is it? The Buster Sword. Yeah, the Buster Sword. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna cut things, cut watermelons. And, wow. And water bottles. Did that tell you guys about my idea for a new yarn business? No. It's fucking par- pocket lint po- um, yarn. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's real cheap. You just go into like consignment right. shops, you check in pockets, get free lint, right. and you okay. make yarns. Just get swords to like gather yeah, you're selling, baskets. You selling on Etsy or what's up? Oh no, I sell on the corner. Wait, is that oh. what's on your head? That's a bald spot.